if you're a YouTuber, vlogger, or any type of content creator who works with video, the GoPro Hero is probably not your first thought as a camera platform. But how much do you know about the Hero series and what you can do with it? In this video, we're going to take a look at the Hero 8 Black and everything that it can do. So stick around. Hello, hello, wonderful people. My name is Jay, and you are watching DS Tech Media, where we cover everything tech, specializing in Linux and open source, but also occasionally hardware. And in this case, we're going to be looking at the GoPro Hero 8 Black. And if you're like me, you probably didn't realize how much you could do with the GoPro as a camera platform. For instance, uh, all the expandability that you can bring to it and all the features that it includes. And we're gonna be taking a unbiased look at it and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on it. What are its strengths and where it's lacking. And I'm also gonna try and show as much of the features and capabilities that I possibly can. And I originally bought the Hero 8 on a whim. I was actually looking for a like a fixed studio camera solution and I was pretty surprised by all the features and capabilities and that is why I am doing this specific video. So here we are, this is the GoPro Hero 8 Black. I'll give you some fancy boxing for it. And there is the actual camera. Got some guides, uh, warranty information. And they even give you some stickers. It's pretty cool. So we get a battery. A 3M adhesive bracket mount and a USB type C cable. So to remove this itself, you pull that little tab up, you slide the whole deal forward, and this is the camera itself. Go ahead and remove it. And these are the little mounting flaps. Does not come with an SD card. I have already put in my SD card. This is a 64 gigabyte. And at the time of release for full price, this was a total of $400. And so that is what you get for $400, a little adhesive mount, a cable, and the battery. If you look at the front display there, if we change the orientation, of that changes with it. Same is true of the back panel display, which is pretty cool. So a quick run through of the camera. We've got the power and mode switching on the side here. And this little hole right here is the technically side rear facing microphone. You have the display and there's a built in tiny LED at the top left corner there. On top, we've got the record button and this can also act as the quick capture for if you pull out your camera and want to instantly start recording, you can just press that and it'll do that without needing to actually power it on. Around front here, we have another light indicator and the front information panel, and of course the lens. This here is the front microphone. On the bottom, we have the proprietary mount, and that is the speaker, integrated speaker. 
Pop open the side panel here. This is the battery and right there is the SD card. The charging and connecting for a computer is a USB-C port right here. The battery indicator is in the top right and then we have a memory indicator in the top left. When it's recording, you get a little red flashing LED indicator. And then around front, we can see what mode we're in. So 1080 auto wide and the card and the battery appear on the front as well. But for the money that you're paying for this little device, it seems like you should get, I don't know, a little bit more. There should be at least like a, a carry handle, something like that. And the most upsetting thing about it was this little mounting system. This is like a proprietary GoPro mounting system. My plan was to be able to use this with all of my other camera or audio equipment, you know, the little round nut mounts like microphones use. But I quickly realized that I was gonna need some more accessories to go along with my GoPro. And that's where this comes into play. And this is the Shorty Mini Extension Pole and Tripod. And it lets you have a tripod and a little handle to work with. Once again, using GoPro's uh, patented or proprietary mounting system. So since buying the GoPro, I kind of changed my opinion on what I was going to be using it for because I do need a camera to do things like filming this video right now, you know, things where I'm not at the desktop, things where I'm doing like hardware and tutorials that aren't software based. And before I was bringing my uh, studio microphone out here and doing like a multiple camera setup, sort of like this. But I realized that the GoPro could actually be used as a filming rig in a different way. And I think that the key to being able to do that is with this. So this is the media mod and it adds a lot of functionality that I think is missing from the GoPro itself. And this, believe it or not, will actually run you about $80. And what do you get for the $80? Well, you get the media mod itself and an extra proprietary locking mechanism, nut thing. So what does the media mod add? Well, first of all, it is not waterproof. In fact, it somewhat negates the waterproof aspect. But you do get this directional microphone and you get a top and side slot mounting points for accessories such as you could add lighting to it or you could add uh, a, a display for seeing yourself while you're filming. Also, you get a couple more ports. The USB-C port on the GoPro itself is actually hidden below the uh, side panel here. So you get easier access to that, which is kind of cool. And then we also get a 1 8 inch microphone jack into the GoPro system, but then you get a mini HDMI out. So you could run your GoPro's output to a monitor or a television. Let me go ahead and install this bad boy. All right, so we're gonna be removing the little hatch door. And you just slide it right in there. So now with the media mod installed, we can actually go into our video configuration. And down here on mics, we can select this and change between use media mod mic to prioritize audio coming in from the front of the camera, the back of the camera, or stereo. Okay, so let's demonstrate the quick capture. So the GoPro is entirely off and you see something and you want to quickly take a video. No need to turn it on. We're just going to hit that record button and it's going to power on and immediately 
start filming. An additional feature, if you have an important moment in a video, come over to the side here, hit the mode button, and it adds highlights. And that way when you're going back and cutting up or editing footage, you can quickly get to the highlights that you specify. You're done with the quick capture, when you stop recording, camera actually automatically powers off. So another thing you can do with quick capture, if you want to do time-lapse mode, we can hold the uh, record button for three seconds. Now the camera is actually capturing in time warp, which is what time lapse is set to by default. Time warp is hyper smooth applied to time lapse video. It allows you to capture super stabilized time lapse videos while you move about a scene. Increase the speed up to 30 times to turn longer activities into shareable moments. Camera analyzes the scene to apply time warp based off your selected speed. It then processes the footage in the camera and produces the time warped video. And this button down bottom here actually allows you to go back to real time. So instead of the time warp, it's simply recording in real time. We can swipe all the way to the right, uh, brings us up our photo mode. We've got super photo, high dynamic range or HDR, standard, and we can also shoot in RAW. Over here we have our timer delay, 10 seconds, three seconds or off. Here we can choose our lens, wide, linear, narrow. We go down to photo here and we get different modes, photo, live burst, burst, and night mode, and we can even define our own custom modes. We can hit this button here to manage them, meaning we can move where they appear in the list and we've even got a uh, zoom feature here swipe over to the middle option it takes us to video and we can also switch modes by hitting the mode button time lapse is in the forest corner we've got night lapse time lapse and time time warp available video screen can turn on a four times slow motion with that and that's in 1080 standard at 60 frames if we set it to the actual slow mode the amount of uh, slow motion I believe also depends on which mode you're in if we swipe up we can actually rewatch clips we've already taken and this is our little progress bar and we can also add the highlights we can click this button up here to get a little overview. This is the one from earlier. The highlight that I took when I was recording this appears as a little yellow dot. And we can also turn slow mode on or off in here and you can of course delete. You can hear my voice coming out of the audio there. We can also set volume to off, maximum, or half. Swiping back down takes us back to the main screen. I want to go into the settings on configuring the different modes. So let's say we hit plus to set up our own new mode. So we've got mode uh, we've got video looping which allows you to save sd card space by recording in a continuous loop until you've captured the moment you want and then of course slow mode which is record video in up to eight times super slow motion we can then set your resolution and your frames per second and we have a ton to pick from here 4k 2.7k 1440 those are all 4x3 aspect ratio. Then there's regular 4K, 2.7K, and 1080P, which are all 16x9. 
and in 1080 we can go anywhere from 24 all the way up to 240 frames per second and that's specifically for the slow mode but as you go up to say 4k giving us a notice that the playback at this resolution frames per second your phone or computer must support hevc but in 4k you can record at 60 down to 30 24 but 60 is as high as it goes and different options will become unavailable depending on those settings so at 1080 we can still set zoom uh, we've got a low light option for capturing low light you can turn the hyper smoothing on or off high boost crops the wide lens by 10 percent and this crops it even more off has no cropping clips allows you to shoot a 15 or 30 second video that's easy to save to your phone and share on social media but what's really cool is down in the protune options got some of our you know dslr camera features here we can set the minimum and max iso sensitivity you know we can tune our white balance it can change bit rate we can adjust our shutter all the way up to 1 and 960 well exposure value compensation sharpness high all the way down to low and you can of course maximize your storage by lowering these settings as far as color goes we've got flat and gopro uh, let's see let's see if i can demonstrate this oh! That's flat, and that's GoPro. With GoPro on, you can kind of see the glare of the shiny surface on the sticker. With flat, the sticker kind of gets like a deep black color to it. We also have the ability to record standard audio without a raw audio track, a minimally processed raw audio track, medium processing raw audio track and a raw audio track with full processing there's wind compensation auto on or off and for the mics they are by default set to stereo meaning it's capturing from this side microphone as well as from the front one. Oh, and down here we can actually set what shortcuts appear on the display when you're running in that mode so lower left can be your lens lower right can be zoom upper left slow motion and upper right hyper smooth and we can change those we, we can change those between all of these options they just about everything that can be created into a shortcut if you do the pull down menu this is our little like options panel basically up top we've got our little indicators so the far left one is the location indicator the center one means that it's connected to your phone and the right one looks to be a cloud that means that it is currently uploading to the cloud we've also got the ability to turn on the grid this control turns a uh, voice control on you can actually control the gopro with voice commands this one turns on audio in the camera itself and this enables or disables quick capture so if, if i disable this i can't get the camera on with the pressing of this to do the, the fast capturing and there's also a lock screen and we can lock our orientation as well but the most important stuff is here in the preferences so connections uh, I, I guess some people might find that useful i don't particularly care for things like that under input output we had the media mod connected that would show up here set your auto power off you can disable leds if you don't want those lights flashing uh, anti-flicker is about when you're capturing screens with the gopro uh, in the u.s everything is mostly a 60 hertz flicker rate we can change video compression there's there's h264 and hevc more of your older computers and phones are going to be able to play back the video whereas hevc is strictly high efficiency video compression and yeah that is the uh the gist of it so a lot more than you might have expected out of out of a camera it's uh it's actually pretty impressive and here we have a shotgun mic 
and LED light attached to the GoPro. And I've made this possible with a USB C hub to power the light specifically. And these are not made for the GoPro. These are actually add-ons that I bought for my camera. And you know, this is not practical, but it does work. Um, guess we'll have to go ahead and hit record to see if the microphone works. Okay, so hopefully this is now recording through the camera. Or rather the shotgun mic. Let me go ahead and turn this light on. And it has a few adjustable levels. But yeah, just basically testing it out. Hopefully this comes through. And then we have the GoPro app, which can work for local videos that you've taken with the phone itself. The light attached to the GoPro. There's a cloud storage option. But most importantly, we can, um, control the GoPro through the app and there's even uh, live streaming capabilities you can set it up for gopro.com Facebook Twitch YouTube and other RTMP so I could run this on my RTMP server looks like all of our options are in here as well And we can control every option that's uh, here. Other little options here. So I just changed it to the uh, super view. Do what let me do? Oh wow, it'll let you do widescreen as well. Yeah, I mean, to me this is kind of a game changer. And then of course we can download our footage. And it looks like we might also be able to, yeah, we can review our media from the camera. So since starting this video, I actually ended up buying a couple more things for the GoPro. I got the Jaws Flex Clamp, the Light Mod, I also got the Display Mod. Clearly it's uh, much more compact than the other light. Okay, and now to the display mod. It comes in a little case. But there she is. Plugs into the mini HDMI. All right, so here we are. Uh, the whole shebang. You flip it down, turn it around, and it even shows the battery level in the top corner there. So we've got uh, multiple settings for the light, including a strobe for what reason, I'm not really sure. And this is actually the diffuser. We take that off, you can see how bright it really is. That's the lowest setting. That's the highest setting. It's pretty damn bright. And if we want the uh, screen to come back in the back, all we have to do is hit the button 
for whatever reason, the display itself stays on and just shows the battery level. And then you can have your back display back. And with it running like this, I'm able to see what I'm doing while I'm doing it so I can capture what's going on. And this is one of the uses I actually have for it. I plan to use it for doing hardware videos and be able to actually look at this display while I'm doing the work. And I think that that is pretty awesome. So we got all that and just power it down and fold it up. Fits in my uh, a microphone bag. And it's a small enough piece of gear that it, it fits in there. Maybe makes sense to take the light off for that, but you know, you gotta love the ergonomics of it. All right, so this is a test of the Media Mod front mic. And I'm also going to play some music. All right, so now we're using Media Mod stereo mic setting, and I am speaking from behind the camera now. And now I'm clearly speaking from the front, and we are going to play the same song, same volume, same everything. Here we go. So now we are using just the GoPro with the built-in speakers. Here's the media mod as proof. And same exact setup as before. Here we go. Okay, so final thoughts on the GoPro Hero 8 Black. First of all, let's talk about the audio test while that's still fresh. With the Media Mod front facing microphone, the sound comes through pretty well, but everything almost has like a low pass filter effect to it. Not to the point that it was bad, but it was fairly obvious. The medium mod stereo test was noticeably higher in volume and definitely caught a lot more treble and high end sound frequency, even to the point sometimes where it was almost as if I was speaking too loud. The Hero 8's built-in microphone test, I think, sounded more similar to the front-facing mic of the Media Mod. And especially with the recording of the music, the built-in audio, I think, had the best range of levels captured. In the end, I don't think that Media Mod microphone is necessarily an upgrade, especially given the relatively high price tag. It's clear that GoPro was trying to expand the capabilities of their camera to vlogging and content creators, etc. And it kind of feels like the microphone was an afterthought. That's not to say that the medium mod isn't worth buying because having the top and side shoe mounts is very nice to have. But if audio is the top priority, you might want to buy a shoe mountable external road microphone or some other higher quality mic. Despite the underwhelming performance of the microphone, I don't think it's a total deal breaker. I still think it's a usable product. 
So regarding the GoPro itself, the video quality is excellent. The image stabilization is excellent. There are tons of features, so many different solutions for placing it on a helmet, a bike. I think there's one for a surfboard and it really does fill the action cam space perfectly. And being able to control it through the app on your phone is also a major win for the hero system. If you're doing uh, vlogging videos, etc. and so forth, the display mod is definitely very helpful. But I should also note the newer Hero 9 features a tiny built-in front-facing display. So if you're just trying to get an idea of if what you're filming is in frame or not, I'm sure that will work perfectly fine. And there's no need to even have the media mod with the Hero 9 in probably a lot of use cases. But the price of the Hero 9 is also much higher. Uh, currently, I think you can get the Hero 8 for $250, which is a much better deal than what I paid for it at $380. GoPro is kind of taking the Apple route here where they're giving you a decent product, but then if you actually want to do anything with it, they kind of nickel and dime you and you're sort of locked into their little proprietary system. If you look online though, there are some third party systems that let you expand the GoPro. And I definitely think that I will be getting some use out of it. I think I probably did spend a little too much money on all the features I bought going crazy with it there. One of the negative aspects is that you don't really have the ability to zoom in or out while you're recording. So really sticks true to its action cam design in that way because with an action cam it's a hit record and just kind of capture everything as you go whereas if i'm using my pixel 4 i can kind of zoom in or out change the focus and i have you know more dynamic active dslr type controls the form factor and size of the whole deal even with all the extras is excellent doesn't take up a lot of room uh, the touch screen is a little bit finicky because it's so small but once again the app sort of solves that problem another issue i will note is that at least with my unit the battery life was not that great uh, seems like it was going down just a little too quickly but all in all, I, I really like the product. I find it kind of hard to recommend, but I'm going to be making other videos in the future with the cameras. So hopefully that'll maybe give you a better idea if you're considering purchasing one. And uh, I'd love to hear any of your thoughts on it. If any of you out there have the Hero 8 or the Hero 9, let me know what you do or don't like about it. And I hope that someone out there finds this video useful. If you like this content, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out some other videos. Consider subscribing. I greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch. And there will be more content to come. So I will see you in the next one.